Guys, we have a great Between the Pond and Store. Before we get into it, I wanna thank our episode sponsor. Once again, Bong Water Beverage Company. This is a THC infused drink designed to hit you fast. Other edibles take hours. This shit gets in about 10 minutes. Bong Water is available in Minnesota, Oklahoma, Missouri, Kansas, parts of Texas, parts of Wisconsin. If they're not in your state yet, visit bongwaterbeverageco.com. There's a link in the video description. Find out if they're coming to you soon. Must be 21 years of age or older to consume in my great state of Minnesota. With that, you guys, let's get into a great video. He's a creepy old man in a windowless van. What in the true crime do we have here? Oh, peaches. You a fan of peaches? You like peaches? Peaches? The fruit? Peaches? Yeah. yeah. You like them? Yeah? Yeah. Is that worth anything, dude? Not to me. You brought me a light fixture and the old jug. So I don't, this kind of stuff I don't want. Yeah, like it's a gross old jug. I got enough of those. Dude, will you give me, give me something for the No, I mean, it's also it's from 1985, it's too new. So I'm gonna pass on this stuff. Is this all you got today? Yeah. Okay, yep, I'm gonna pass on this stuff, but I'm gonna go ahead and put her back and here we go. Thanks for that. Yep, thanks for coming by. We're like, you guys, I don't wanna buy antiques. I do not want to buy them at all. Keep them to yourself. I'm sure they're cool. I'm sure they're very interesting. I can't afford to buy them. I don't want to buy them. And I'm kind of laying down the law. He's an exception for the content because I don't spend that much on him anyway. And my relationship with him is profitable, but like within a limit. The vintage iron, I think it was a vintage iron. That might've been worth a couple bucks. We got enough of that stuff. Uh, next time the Connors comes in gang, I've got my Chuck E. Cheese vintage mug. Got my Chuck E. Cheese tickets. And I have a Patty Wetterly US co- <laughs> okay, this is too far. I'm still gonna do it. I'm still gonna do it. It's just, even I recognize this is too far. You know what, let's talk about this. Let me just educate you guys about this crime uh, because this ruined my childhood. Seriously, let me explain why. This is one of the most impactful crimes of the 20th century because of the shadow it would cast. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about at the end, this had a massive impact on my life, what I'm about to talk about this case. So it is the disappearance of Jacob Wetterling. This missing kid was the specter cast over my home state of Minnesota and really just child abduction as a whole from the moment it happened in October of 1989, just two months after I was born until I mean, today, it's it's one of the most famous child abduction cases uh, in American history. On October 22nd, 1989, Jacob Wetterling was 11 years old. He, his younger brother, Trevor, and a friend were riding their bikes. They're coming back from a convenience store and they were like in the middle of nowhere. This truck pulls up to him and a man gets out with a gun. He said, you know, figures out who's the oldest and he tells the other two, it's Trevor and the friend. He says, run, don't look back, I will shoot you. And he orders Jacob into the car. And this is the last time Jacob is ever seen again. Now we learned the truth about what happened, but this was a cold case until 2016. And when this broke, it was a big fucking deal in Minnesota, including like, even I was like, oh, they, they have an answer? Wow, I didn't think we'd ever have an answer. They never found him. Uh, there was an exhaustive manhunt. The FBI was in, they looked everywhere. They were searching everywhere. The hysteria that this created amongst parents because they could not find this kid. And my God, the FBI turned the state upside down looking for him. I'm not going to get into the specifics of what exactly happened because it is really bad, but they never found him. And it wasn't until 2014, there was a huge push to reopen the cold case and the suspect, the person of interest, number one, and there's a whole bunch of podcasts you guys can listen to about this. They really f***ed up the investigation, like really f***ed up. Uh, they had the guy who did it. His name is Danny Heinrich. Here's a picture of him. When I first started the Tickle Monster Gal thing, I honestly pictured Danny as as being like, you know, when I when I was first conjuring the thing that is Tickle Monster Gal. Oh, my name's Tickle Monster Gal. Yeah, my real name's Danny Heinrich, but uh, call me Tickle Monster Gal. Oh, Jesus. This was terrifying for parents because they never found them and the amount of resources they put in and they never found them. What ended up happening was this created a national registry for sex offenders. And if you guys are like, well, didn't they always have it? No, 
They didn't. Jesus Christ, do you think they would if they didn't? This case is what created that. The Jacob Wetterling Crimes Against Children and Sexually Violent Offender Registration Act of 1994 is the sex offender registration. There was none before that. You could have some f***ing sicko living down your street and you would have no idea until this was passed. I was going to say some other words that were, were <laughs> the choice and crass and I'm not going to say that. The abduction also, and I didn't know this was a thing either, there used to be a holding period if you're going to report a child missing. Like, you know, you have to wait two days. There used to be a two day waiting period for reporting children missing it. And that is a big part of what f***ed up the investigation because they, had they started looking for him immediately, again, listen to the case, they wouldn't have found him alive, but they definitely would have caught Danny right away before he hurt anybody else because he did go on to hurt other people. This kid's disappearance was profoundly impactful to parents and to children growing up around this time, like me. Ultimately what happened was Heinrich was a person of interest. They couldn't get him to confess. They couldn't quite get him. They got him on child can I say that on YouTube? I don't even know if I can say that. Why don't you bleep that? Cheese pizza. There we go. You know, they had enough evidence to bury him and they said, look, we know you killed Jacob. We can't prove it. Make this easier. Avoid the trial. You're going to go to prison for a very long time and we'll just, we'll put this whole thing to bed. And he agreed and he signed. So he got 20 years in federal prison. He's in Massachusetts. That's the case. Uh, it, it is, if you live in Minnesota or Wisconsin or North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, I guarantee you know this case. Uh, if you live in Minnesota, you definitely know this case. This terrorized my parents. My, I'm an only child, and my parents were so f***ing overprotective of me as a kid, and it honestly hurt me as an adult. Every time I wanted to go to a friend's sleepover, to a friend's cabin, God, you name it. No, why not? Jacob Wetterling, Evan. Do you want to end up like him? My parents, like, truly believed it. I remember when I was six, went down, the neighbors with the Neopets, you know, you guys go watch that episode if you don't know what I'm talking about. But I went there, this was when I was six, it was years before this happened. Went in there, and we were playing a board game, it was after school, and I didn't call my parents and tell them where I was going. And, like, you know, I should have done that. But I was six, and like, hey, Evan, you want to come and play a game? We're playing in the street. Okay, and we went in. Oh, I was in there for about an hour. And I walk out, and the entire Edina police force was in my driveway and my mom is in tears screaming and my dad is in tears and they're screaming and I just walk up the driveway and I'm like, what's going on? And my mom, ah, 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 ah. My parents were hysterical. Just as an adult, it, it makes me angry looking back that I had to suffer consequences because of something that happened to somebody else because of the paranoia that was put out. Yeah, so that's 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 the abduction. God, I guess now that I tell the story out loud, it's really f***ed up that I bought these to wear them when the con artist comes. I'm still gonna do it. I'm still gonna do it. All right, we'll talk, I'll talk about this in the um, Between the Pawn. That's what it's called. I took a vacation for a week, uh, and I have come back to absolute chaos. Holy shit, we have a lot of orders. I'm, I'm struggling trying to get all these out. I had something happen last night, and it the lack of common sense and how surprised the cop was that I did what I did, I was just like, doesn't any everybody know to do this? Got back yesterday, I decided to take today off too. I ended up taking off a full week, and I, I cannot tell you how much I needed it, and how recharged I feel, and like I feel so much better. So I got back, like late yesterday afternoon, I took a nap and then came here for a little bit, started doing orders and then I was like, I'm gonna go home. Dicked around and then at like one in the morning, I went running. I go running really late at night, it's like my thing. So I'm out running in Minneapolis and I see something in the street as I'm like coming up to it and it kind of looks like a gun and I'm like, no way. And it's a gun. I'm like, this isn't real. I was wearing gloves. So I looked at it and I'm like, I'm looking around like, is this a trap? Is it like, it's just sitting right here in the middle of the street. I don't think, and I picked it up and pulled out the the magazine. Oh no, it was real. And I'm like, oh I didn't rack it to see if it was loaded. I uh, just was like, Kate, okay, put it down exactly where you found it. And I called 911. Luckily the cops came like right away to pick it up for me. So they told me that they were in a car chase with somebody and they thought the guy threw something out the window and they had just arrested the guy. And he said he didn't throw anything out the window. And it's like, yeah, well, asshole, I found your gun. What got me? The cop was so thankful that I called and he's like, most people would just keep it. And I'm like, who the f would keep a gun that they just find? Like it could be involved in a murder. That is a crime to keep that. The cop was just like incredulous that I turned it in and I just was like, hey, like I found a gun I'm gonna wait by it, but can somebody please come pick it up? So yeah, I, I just could not believe that most people would do something as stupid and reckless as keep it. I thought this was common sense and I guess not. Okay, so with that, Back to work, because I have so many goddamn orders. You guys will notice, uh, 
I'm still, like the store is closed still. I'm gonna be open tomorrow. It's, um, we'll talk about it in between the plot, but there's gonna be some new strategies going forward. I just, I need to process everything that's going on here before I take new business here. I, I cannot handle both. I have a sign that says we're under construction. You know what's under construction? It was my mental health. I had to rebuild it. But, uh, all right, let's do some whatnot. Add some bonus in here too to make people happy because they're pissed. It's a weak smiley face. I do have a update. I bought some gold from the picker. I said I'd make, if I did well, I'd make about 300. The gold market actually moved up the day after I bought them. I ended up making about 500 on the deal. So that was a really good deal. Uh, I sold two of them here on what night and then I sold the rest to another dealer, but the other dealer paid me above spot because they were quarter ounces. And they, like I said, the market just happened to move up in my favor. Profit, yes. The one thing I learned from my bar mitzvah, profit. label printer is going to be the death of me. I, I hate this label printer so much. I desperately need to get a new one. It constantly malfunctions and I'm almost like, I'm almost out of labels because it does this bullshit. It just backs up and spits them out and doesn't like, then doesn't take them. Ah, go run a micro center. So as I'm walking out, I just noticed, uh, it flies down. How lovely. Only fans, anyone? And of course I have to remember positivity because I've been too negative lately and nobody wants to hear that. Um, oh, it'll be fine. Laugh at my expense. It's funny. It's really funny. Yeah, positivity, all right. That actually weirdly worked. Suddenly I'm in a better mood. Yeah! So the biggest batch, I don't know if 50 year old silver dollars have gained anything in value or- uh, Well, I see you got Morgans there. Those I, those I buy the Ikes, you can spend them. Okay, yeah, there's a mix of stuff I will buy here and other stuff not. Actually, some of the stuff you can just spend it. So everything's got President Eisenhower on it, despite him being my favorite president. Spend it. Okay, these one, these ones are all 20 bucks each. Okay. Uh, what else got? That's an old Indian head. 1899p, that's a buck. And that's an 1858. Seated. Oh, it's been cleaned. Uh, this is 20 bucks. $161. Okay, you gotta go. Let me write you up a receipt. 161. Okay. Thank you, sir. A, a, a productive clean out the drawer. Yeah, uh, you got other stuff? Come on by, happy okay. to take a look. Really quick, this stuff, no common date here. I do, however, this is an 1858 Oh, half dollar, is an extra fine AU condition. It's been cleaned. The back is really clean. That one, I, at 20 bucks, I can't go wrong on that. Let's see what that one's worth. Oh yeah, that, that, that coin, that's about 150 bucks. Pay 20 bucks, okay, double my money. And that's how it's done. All right. Show you guys this really quick. Uh, this person has a four hundred dollar. They spent four hundred twenty. They spent over four hundred dollars for my mystery, or not my mystery pack. My subscription service. There we go. There's about five hundred and fifty dollars retail here. Wildlife in need. Orangutan from I think the uh, Perth Mint. This is a fundraiser they did to raise money, which always gets me when they do this because mining is horrible for the environment, and it's like you're gonna make a silver coin from. Okay. So they're getting this. They're getting this retails for one hundred and twenty. I'm charging um, 85. One ounce silver coin, also from the Perth Mint. Famous naval battles, Perth Mint, Midway. The year of the snake, colorized 2013. These are expensive, these are really hard to find. Also from the Perth Mint, we have a Proof 69 Ultra Cameo, one of the first 1250 struck, two one grammers, a 10th ounce Aztec, a 1940 colorized one ounce round, Libertad from 20, it's a one tenth ounce from 2023. And then Discover Australia colorized. Uh, these are like 50 bucks. So, like I said, they're getting a huge discount. Check out bondmanstore.com. Join the club. They want a quality. You can do quality or you can do quantity. This is quantity for 100 bucks. They're getting three buffaloes, quarter ounce Aztec. I'm sorry, two quarter ounce Aztecs and a one tenth ounce Aztec. So, check out bondmanstore.com and sign up with the club. Once again, you guys, I want to thank the episode sponsor. As is tradition at this point, Bong Water Beverage Company. Bong Water is a THC infused drink. It hits you fast. It's in Minnesota. It's in Oklahoma, Missouri, Kansas, parts of Texas, parts of Wisconsin. Visit bongwaterbeveragecompany.com to find out if they are coming to your state soon. If they are not there yet, must be 21 years of age or older to consume. There is a link in the video description. Check it out. And with that, you guys, 
We are Between the Pawn. I'm back. We didn't have a video last week because I went on vacation. So first thing I want to say to you guys, because some of you guys were really pissed that I wasn't here and the store was closed and nobody was responding. If, okay, if I fall off the face of the earth, either I got arrested, I died, or I'm on vacation. I went to Austin, Texas. I only went for like a long weekend. I went Friday, Saturday, Sunday, came back Monday. I went with my friend Robert, but no, he and I had a great time. Uh, we've kind of declared that we're gonna take a trip around this time period every year. It's gonna be like an annual thing. So, you know, next year, if I disappear for some point in time, wonder where in the world is Evan Kale. I would have kept my store open. My right-hand man also took a vacation at the same time he just like happened to have something going on. Coming back, uh, you know, I went to celebrate having the store for three years. I can't believe it's been three years already. We're gonna have some new strategies here going forward. You know, I talked about in the last video, it was, it was kind of my celebration video of it's been three years. And and it's really made me think, hey, what's working, what's not? I brought in someone to, or I should say, I hired somebody to help me with this. And part of the problem is there's a lot of inefficiency that is going on here. There's inefficiency with time. There's inefficiency with how I'm conducting myself. There's inefficiency with money. The belt needs to get tightened and I need to figure out a better way for running this business and just being more conscientious of the choices that I make, the strategies that I employ. So I finally, you guys, hired somebody to run the store for me, or I should say, you know, I've been looking for somebody to take over my duties of running the brick and mortar store so that I can focus on this because right now it's all half measures. And if you know anything about Breaking Bad, no half measures. No more half measures, Walter. So he is gonna help me with implementing the strategy going forward and trying to fix a lot of the boneheaded mistakes that I made. And make it so again, I can focus on social media so I can do more whatnot auctions because it is such a big part of this business. And just to make it so like I can st start to take more time off. And I'm excited to, uh, have them be a part of the business and help out and just make this less stressful for me. Again, uh, again, you guys, obviously we were way, way backed up on orders because we were gone for like a week. I've almost gotten caught up. I'm not fully there yet. If on whatnot, your order is outstanding from before March 1st, I'm sorry, please cancel it. Something happened. I don't know what. I think it might have to do with the fact that we're shipping out so many packages and there's so many order items I'm selling every week. It's very hard to keep up with and like, holy shit. I, we're trying the best that we can, but if we make a mistake, calm the f down. Uh, I'm hoping to get a head on all this and, and once I get a better system in place for like making this run smoother, because my new guy's got a lot of ideas already on day one. Okay, on to the true crime. I'm not gonna do it in this video. I have three DB Cooper notes. They're real. The guy followed through. I'm gonna hold it off for next video because uh, there's gonna be a lot of hype around this. I'm in talks with Whatnot about turning this into like an event. I'm hoping they can get me on the news for this, but I have three DB Cooper notes. I am probably keeping one. Do not ask me to buy them. I can't sell them to you right now. I have to milk this for all it's worth for my own benefit. Meaning I need, I'm probably gonna be selling them on Whatnot and Whatnot is gonna help me get on the news. And like, that's kind of what I'm pitching them. If they don't want to do it, then maybe. But no, you can't have one. Don't ask. If you do ask, I'm going to ignore it or I'm going to be like, no, did you not hear me? I said, no, you're, you're tying up my... No, not happening. So look for that. There will be announcements when it's going to happen. Again, it will probably be whatnot auctions. Start... I'm, I, I I don't want to get into the specifics. It'll be it'll be starting bid a dollar. I'm not going to get f***ed on it. I'm going to make it so that I, I do quite well on it. I'm not going to, again, get into specifics, but like that's probably what's going to happen. Speaking of D.B. Cooper, I have had a ton of people for whatever reason now now that we're sold out messaging me wanting me to buy them a limited quantity when with the pawn man true crime i make x amount going forward i think it's just going to be 20. there's gonna be plenty of hype i'm gonna be transparent when they come out they're not just gonna quietly drop there's your chance to get it if you don't take that chance then it's gone what i am going to do and I haven't figured out how I'm going to do this yet without, because I want to have integrity here for all the people that paid all, like people were paying upwards of $400 for these DB Cooper bars. I think I'm going to re-release them smaller, much smaller, not numbered, not signed, not with a card. Because there is so much demand and it's such a cool piece of work of art that Lady Liberty Bullion did. But I don't know how feasible that's gonna be. I don't know if I want to do that yet because I, I I still feel it's a slap in the face to everybody who bought one. It's gonna be a different product. It's not gonna be the big numbered thing. It'll be very tiny if I do it. But I don't know if I'm gonna do it yet. If I do, you'll find out. Speaking of which, uh, true crime, the next issue, chat, chassis, I keep calling her chassis. Cassie's done. I'm holding one right here. 
Uh, Cassie was kind of a flop. I was really disappointed. There's a few of them on the website still. I massively reduced the price. Uh, they're 120. I think it has to do with the fact that her crimes are not as well known. But the next true crime. You guys ready for this? You ready for this? I'm really excited. We're doing Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. The one that went missing. Like I said, it's not gonna be a criminal. It's going to be a crime. So there will be 20 of those most likely. Lady Liberty Bullion is working on it right now. So look for that. What I'm also going to do, you guys, for the Pawn Man uh, Bullion Club, one of you or two of you every month, you're paying $100, you're gonna get one of these. I'm gonna pick one or two of you at random, and that's gonna be what you get for your subscription service for $100, meaning I, I will come close to breaking even on it. It's gonna be like a lottery. Uh, and that I think is the coolest thing I can do unless you explicitly don't want it, in which case just write a note But I think that's the coolest thing I can do instead of you know These items that are going for 250 350 dollars for a hundred bucks I'm gonna just one of you guys want to be in this club and you get the, the true crime Oh speaking of the subscription service don't buy multiple quantities. That's not how it works you sign up and you cancel when you want it to stop. But let's say you wanted it to go for five months. Don't buy five of them. That just means you're getting charged $500 a month. I had a lot of people that were confused about that. If you buy five of them, that doesn't mean you bought five months. That means you signed up to be billed $500 every month. Finally, before we get into the questions, my essay was published. Uh, it was published in Sai Xin. It's like the China's version of the Wall Street Journal. It apparently, like a lot of people have read it and they are maybe now gonna be translating it into English or publishing it in English as well. If you guys have not read my essay, Through the Storm, uh, it's everything I went through in the World War II book saga. It's my perspective. All right, uh, with that, let's move on to the questions. And once again, you guys, please post questions for these Between the Pawns in the question section below. I'm pulling these off my phone today. All right, question one coming in from um, Raymond McGowan. Ha, Raymond. <laughs> that was my attempt at doing pedophile Mr. Rogers. Hi, hey, neighbor. I see you got a whole mess of kids there. I love watching your content. Just curious how much behind the scenes drama you deal with. I've noticed you've been more private after experiencing some crazy events. So luckily, as far as drama in here goes, with my coworkers, like none. There's like no drama. Other drama, not much. And when I do encounter it, I it is oh quite dramatic. I mean, like with the sh there's you guys know there's some sh going on behind the scenes right now. There's quite a lot of drama there. You know what? I'm gonna just leave it alone until it's resolved and until I get my resolution, shall we say? Uh, I gotta leave it alone. Outside of that, there's not there's not much drama. And like you know, people get pissy at me. I just I'm at the point I'm so burned out and I I am so like brain melted and scar tissued over and I've been through so much. Sh since opening the store and entering this business that like, you know, somebody's gonna be dramatic. Next. Next question coming in from Sirius Jocking. Sirius says, congrats on three years on making it on your own. Thank you. I, I can't believe I've made it this far. If you had a golden ticket that let you spend a day in any public building or facility off limits to the public, what would it be? Thanks. I would love to sit in the president's chair. Not because I, I just, would love that, that would be experience of a lifetime to be able to sit in the President of the United States chair. And I like, I don't really want to go to the White House that bad. I'd love to go just to see, but like, it's not like, like, oh my God, I'm dying to go. I, I hope I go one day. But man, I would love to sit in that chair just for the fing experience of it. Uh, what's another one? I don't give a mother about Disney. I hate Disney. I think, you know, anti-Semitic mouse. That said, I've heard there's like a secret room or like a secret like party zone for like VIPs at Disneyland and I would be very interested to see that. If there's a party, please invite me. I want to go to the Tom Cruise Illuminati party. I want to go to that orgy. That sounds like fun. Slash, I want to go to an orgy. I've never been invited. I'm like, I'm not kidding. Speaking of... Question... YouTube video. Trying to find a Starcraft with a little cross space. Birthday magician, little Timmy is 39. Somewhere between balloon animals and coin tricks. Oh, beaches. Who set a fire in the house? Oh, gas leak. Come on. Chaos. Oh. Where's little Timmy? Run around. Do your damnedest to help him. Find little bastard. Let him look in the Starcraft. Where is he? Parents in tears. Stay. Leave for the night. Tried failed. Back home to the cellar. Oh. 
down in the basement. Little Timmy's in his birthday suit. Oof. In the 17th century, well, down into the depths, let him marinate a couple weeks. Two years later, candlelight vigil. Potluck. Bashing it out. Let mom and dad have a taste, they say. Wow. Oh. It's delicious. What's in it? Oh, says. Oh. A magician never reveals his secrets. Oh. Dick Monster Gal. Oh. Dick Monster Gal says, uh, or I should say Danny Heinrich says, oh. how do you think your business will evolve in the next year? So one thing that we're doing, I, you guys, I have so much stuff put away. And it, that, is, that is the dumbest strategy. And it was only illuminated to me pretty recently that like trying to hedge the metal markets and putting away all this is a bad idea. So I'm not doing that anymore. And I'm hoping the cash flow that getting rid of all that creates. Say, so, hey, guys, please come to my what not auctions because there's gonna be some really, really good in the next couple weeks. Very rare stuff that I've had for since I started this business. I'm hoping that that changes things. I want to expand. I want to expand obviously here. You know, I'm trying. I'm trying to change how I do this here. I'm trying to generate more money here because I'm. I'm not right now. But also, I wanna. I wanna open multiple locations, uh, and I know exactly where I wanna open them. I'm not gonna say where because I don't wanna give anyone any ideas. But I have two locations I wanna open, and within five years, I want to be at one of them. Or I wanna have one of them open at least, if not both of them. I also I wanna get out of this location too. It's not gonna happen the next year because my lease isn't up for another two years. But this store, this is too small. I can't work with the landlord. It's a real bummer. But I. I need to find a new facility. What's my goal for the next year is just to clean everything up, uh, fix the cash flow, and make this business run more efficiently. All right, next question coming in from Evil Dude 812 So I don't know if you're familiar with Techo Monster. I feel like you guys might be buddies. Congratulations on three years. Keep it up. Well, thank you. Your content is so interesting. Keeps me intrigued every time. What's your favorite vacation you've ever taken? I go to New York a lot. I have a ton of fun when I go out there. I, I always have fun when I go out there. Otherwise, it would have to be the bachelorette party that I went on last year to Miami. One of my best friends, Steph, she made me her maid of honor and I got to go on the bachelorette party with a bunch of girls and I had a f***ing great time. I had so much fun that trip. Honestly, probably that. Julianne M. Clark, or maybe it's Julian says, congratulations on three years and thanks for the great content. Any chance you are still auctioning off subjects? If so, how you'll be handling precious metals in your estate slash will? Can you avoid inheritance tax? Is it better to inherit gold coins than cash coins for cash or real estate? Cheers. Julian, that's a good question. Uh, yes, I will be auctioning off more topics. Um, I do have the next subject picked out. Anybody recognize this? You know what this is? This is the next subject. Other than that, uh, I don't have the next, I don't have any subjects beyond that picked out, so I will be auctioning off more topics. As far as me giving tax advice goes, I don't f***ing do that. And I don't do that because I'm not qualified to do that, and I don't want to risk getting in trouble for doing that. So I don't give any tax advice at all. Ask your CPA, don't ask me. I don't have an answer because I'm not qualified to give it to you. As far as my will goes, I have it broken down in a percentage. God forbid I die before my friends or my parents, but if I do, and they're gonna have to sell everything off and figure it out and, and <laughs> figure out the percentage that way. That's that's their problem. I'm dead. Do I care? I'm dead. And the last question coming in from the Wildy 1776. I'm not gonna read this question. I'm gonna just say I read this question, and due to the nature of well, here's a fun fictitious story that has nothing to do with reality. There once was a guy named Ian, and Ian beat some motherfuckers in court because he had more evidence, and they were crazy. Fictitious story has nothing to do with reality. Keenan, my editor, did you see that? Did you see, was there something there on this? I didn't see that. Did you see that? Weird. Huh, whatever that would, that has nothing to do with anything, but fictitiously, if I were to answer a question about forgiveness with former employers, if somebody who had massively done me dirty and wronged me and been the definition of around and find out what happens when you take a steaming on somebody they turn around they and grab that turd stuff it down your throat eat you alive no but again that has nothing to do with reality that's just me spitballing a rant you know how did that get in there weird i'm just talking aloud huh thanks for the questions again if you guys have questions post them in the comment section below i am far too petty to let that one go i'm sorry i just i am still mad about but what? Check out Bong Water Beverage Company. If you're a petty asshole, if you're 
and spiteful and still furious about things from years ago, have some bong water. It'll quell your anger just a little bit. Check out my books. Uh, check me out on pawnmanstore.com. Best way to order from me. Join the Bullion Club. Sign up with Whatnot. It's where we sell some of our best stuff outside of the website. Um, there's going to be some hella good auctions coming up this week. I will again be auctioning off topics, so be sure you stop by. Ask me to do it if you're in one of my Whatnot shows. If you don't have Whatnot, download it with my code. There is a link in the video description. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you back here for another great Between the Pawn and a new episode of Pawn Man is coming out next week. Later, guys. AIDS. You guys see my AIDS video yet? AIDS. AIDS!